activated, determined people in the house. Amen. That are wave their hand and shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. But verse 24, it says this. Amen. The 24th verse, Matthew 13, verse 24. If you're there, shout amen. amen. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened to a man which soweth good seed in his field. So good seed to me indicate if it's good seed, there's bad seed. And some of us are reproducing some bad seed. And sometimes we're getting bad because we sow bad. You sow the bad attitude so you reap the bad attitude. You sow discord so you reap discord. Hallelujah. You, you sow gossip so you reap gossip. Hallelujah. So if there's good seed, there's also so something called bad seed. And seed reproduces itself. And some of us don't see harvest of blessings. We see harvest of the bad stuff. If you don't get the weeds out your oil, don't you know weeds got seeds? Weeds got seeds as well. And the weeds will take over the good stuff. Why? Because you didn't uproot the bad stuff. And, and the Bible says it is the little foxes that destroy the vine. Y'all not going to talk to me today. Hallelujah. I'm going to be like Pastor Latour. Y'all ain't talking right. Y'all, come on. We're going to make a shirt call. Y'all ain't talking right. Amen. Y'all ain't talking right. Amen. Y'all, I don't know. Y'all talking outside of y'all neck. Y'all ain't talking right. Y'all ain't talking right. You mind if I steal that? Y'all look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you ain't talking right today. You, you ain't talking right today. Hallelujah. And if you don't take care of, amen, you're, if you don't take care of those weeds, uh, they're going to reproduce something that's going to get out of hand when you try to take care of it. It's going to be too late. You ain't going to have no harvest. Hallelujah. None. Walk through your grass, nothing but sticker bugs. Come on, I, I know exactly. I'm going through a situation right now. I put out some fertilizer. Amen. I thought I was good. I like, Lord, I got to put out some more. I'm tired of walking through my yards and seeing all them sticker bugs. I want to see some Bermuda grass. Come on, somebody. I want to see some San Agustin grass. I want to see some monkey grass. I, I don't want to walk through what's supposed to be my harvest and it end up being thorns uh, that stick into me where I can't even roll in my own front yard. I, 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 I want to I wanna enjoy my harvest. What's supposed to be a blessing to me is not a blessing to me. And I don't want to walk through my yard because I'm getting thorns in my flesh. How does it make you feel when something's supposed to be your harvest? Or when something's supposed to be your breakthrough and it's not your breakthrough, it end up being something that you demise. It end up being something that curse you or it hurts you, but it's supposed to be your harvest. My grass is supposed to be like that golf grass. Supposed to be like that football grass. Come on. I'm supposed to lay all in my grass, but I can't do it because I'm afraid I'm going to get stuck. Why? Because I didn't take care of responsibilities at the right time, and now it don't look good. It look good when it's slow, but when it starts to grow, you can tell that's, that was not harvest. Some of you, what you got, it look like harvest when it's small. But when it starts to grow up, you'll find out it's not harvest. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In other words, there's a kingdom law. If you sow it, God will grow it. It ain't about how spiritual you are oftentimes. It's it's not about, hallelujah, your prayer life all the time. Because you can be an anointed prayer warrior. But if you negate the principle of sowing, you will not reap a harvest in your life. Hallelujah. There's a kingdom principle. LL Cool J know the kingdom principle. I hope I didn't make some of y'all women lust. But he liked that principle. And he said, I've been a tither and I've been a giver. That's why I'm reaping the benefits. If it can work for a man who don't claim to be holier than thou, it definitely can work for you while you got your behind in those seats. If it can work for him, it can work for you. It ain't about how much you make. It's about if you sowing it and planting it into the ground. So his career been over 20-some years. Why? Because the principle worked. God has no respect of person. 
but it do has a respect of sacrifice. If you do what somebody else won't do, God don't respect it. Why? Because it's a kingdom law. Somebody say it's a kingdom law. It's, it's a kingdom law. The woman of God said something that almost told me up while I was driving. Pastor Latoya said that God said some of you, he said, Pastor Darius and Pastor Latoya, the Lord was speaking to her and said, you all have sown enough seeds uh, to be taken care of for the rest of your life. That's not saying you don't sow because now when you sow, you're going to operate in overflow. And some of y'all got seeds uh, that's speaking right now on y'all behalf. Your seeds speaking. Your seeds of positivity. Your, your season when you was mad and upset and going without, but you still gave a positive word. I can't get no help, nobody. When you was happy that your girlfriend got married while you was about to experience a divorce, God going to bless you because you sowed a good seed. When you was happy, when you was having miscarriages, uh, when somebody else would give birth uh, and you brought them a gift, God going to bless you for that. I, yeah, when you was happy, when they was repossessing your car, but you was happy for somebody else uh, that God gave them a car. God don't bless you for that. You was happy about their promotion while you was getting a demotion. Even when he was in your position, you still gave God praise for the increase. God say, I'm going to bless you for that. Your motive got to be right for God to bless you. I can't see your motive, uh, but God judges the heart. Man look on the outside, and God will say, everybody who had an arterial motive, uh, who tried to take you out, uh, I'm going to deal with your enemies. And if you got the right motive, hallelujah, although people couldn't see it, God said, I'm going to bless you because of it. They couldn't see it, uh, hallelujah, but God said, I'm going to bless you because of it. Someone shout, I got good seed. Look at your name and say, neighbor, I got good seed. I, hallelujah, I got good seed. I got good seed and the ground is good. Hallelujah. Go to the 25th verse. But wow, men slept. Forgive me, y'all. His enemy came and sowed tires among the wheat <laughs> and went his way. People will sow negativity in your life. They'll blow up stuff and they'll go away. They'll destroy your house. They'll destroy your marriage. They'll destroy your ministry. They'll, they'll get you fired from your job. They'll sow all kind of seeds of negativity. But when you call them out on it, they ain't nowhere to be found. They'll talk about you behind your back. Uh, but if you was man and woman enough, uh, you would say it in front of my face. Yeah. Hallelujah. But while men slept, the Bible says the enemy came and sowed tags amongst the wheat. Hallelujah. And went his way. Some people are in your life uh, not to do good, but to do evil. Amen. When people come in your life, uh, you got to interview their motive. Why are you in my life? Uh, is it for you or do you really want to be a blessing to me? Is, is it just for what you can get out of it or is it what, uh, hallelujah, or do you really want to be a blessing where we both can benefit from it? And some people are in your life for the wrong reason. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I hope you're in my life for the right reason. Some people are in your life uh, for the wrong reason. Hallelujah. Why? Why you're sleeping? Why? Why you unaware? Why you're unconscious? Why, why you're gullible? Hallelujah. The enemy is trying to come in and he's trying to up the good stuff that you're doing. Why? Because you're unconscious. Uh, you're a sleeper. You, you, you're too gullible to believe everything everybody tell you like they for you when you got some people that are against you. Women, you can't be too gullible. Hallelujah. Just because he smiles at you don't really mean he wants you. Some men will never lead a wife. Y'all ain't going to have me preaching here. They'll complain all day. 
because why they 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 they, they got something in their mind. They want to get in between the see y'all ain't gonna help me. Hallelujah. Yeah. You got some people trying to get in your garden, y'all. The devil trying to get in your garden. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to put a water hose in your garden, y'all. Y'all ain't going to help me. Hallelujah. He's trying to plant some seeds in your garden, and you don't want them seeds. He'll plant seeds of doubt. He'll plant seeds of negativity, and you'll be connected with soul ties, and you can't get rid of him. He didn't plant too many seeds in you. Y'all want to be real in a place. The devil trying to get in your garden. Hallelujah. Your garden is precious, baby. You don't let anybody in your garden. Y'all ain't going to help me. I know you made a mistake, but can you at least be a, have an upgraded mistake? That this time if you made a mistake, at least they got a job. At least they got income. Well, if you be impregnated with a seed, uh, when you get the divorce, y'all ain't going to help me. They can at least pay child support. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's trying to get in your garden. Amen. You got that snake trying to get in your garden. Oh, it, 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 it's just a snake. I don't care what kind of snake it is. Uh, a snake is a snake. Uh, I don't care if it's a grand snake. Uh, I don't care if it's a big snake. Uh, I don't care if it's a little snake. Uh, I don't like snakes. Some of y'all been playing with the snake too long, and the snake then got a grip on you, and he's imposing you with, ve with venom. Come on, with venom. Come on, somebody. And you wonder why you don't got no praise. Uh, he have debilitated your worship. Uh, he have came against your mind. Uh, he got all in your veins. Uh, you can't open up your mouth no more. You can't give God no shout no more. Who you been listening to? The devil ain't got in your garden. Not just the fact he's in your garden, because the devil going to try to get in your garden, but why you're listening to him. Oh, we do know the devil was in the garden of Eden. But he began to talk to Eve, because why? Women give a listening ear to the enemy. You know by your spirit, ha, 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 y'all ain't going to hear me. Women have intuition. you intuitive when it comes to what a man doing, but you're not intuitive when it comes to guarding and protecting your garden. You intuitive, Alan, to know he cheated, but you're not intuitive to know that this man got the wrong motive. Amen. What sense did that make? You got to use your intuition in every area of your life. Don't just use it for when he's doing wrong. Use it when you know his motive's not right. Use it for when you know the words he's speaking are lying, they're manipulative, they're scheming, they're backbiting. He don't mean you're no good. He's trying to get in your garden. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil's trying to get in my garden. Trying to get in your garden by, by words. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, some of y'all, he already in your garden. He already in your garden. Hallelujah. He told the serpent, hallelujah, the serpent began to talk to Eve, amen, and say, you know what, hallelujah, while I'm here, when you eat from that fruit, nothing's going to happen to you. You're going to be all right, hallelujah. Everything's going to be fine. Y'all yeah, 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 don't want to talk about it. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, matter of fact, God didn't really mean it like that. No, God meant it like he said it. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say God meant it. Like he said it. And what happened when the enemy gets in your garden, he, he tried to discredit what God said. He, he tried to water it down like there would not be any calamity of destruction if it happened if you disobey. And oftentimes, we can't enter our harvest, and God kicked them out of the garden and evicted them. Why? Because they listened to the enemy who was in the garden. And if you listen to the enemy, you would get kicked out of your promised place. In other words, you get kicked out of your harvest. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I can't get kicked out of my harvest. Because the word was said, do not touch the tree. Some of y'all have touched something you wasn't supposed to touch. We don't want to talk about this. Amen. God specifically told you, do not talk to them. 
Don't take their phone call. Block their number. Block they block all level of contacts. As a matter of fact, block some of their family members. Because they are a gateway of getting to you, and you really don't like them anyway. Yeah, yeah, they're a gateway. Block every gateway if you know it's not a God relationship. Why? Because the enemy trying to get in your garden. Hallelujah. God told him, he told Adam, do not touch it. Hallelujah. So he already was disobedient when he even took the fruit. And some of us have touched some things, uh, and we wonder why we're poisonous. We wonder how we got venomous. Uh, we wonder why we weighed down. You touched something you was never supposed to touch, y'all. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why? Because you just can't touch it and leave it alone. Because if you touch it, you want to taste it. Yeah, y'all yeah, ain't going to help me talk in here. Because you just can't touch it. Hallelujah. You want to try it out. You can't touch it without tasting it. You let that some be some barbecue chicken in front of you. You just gonna touch that chicken? Some fried chicken? You must be crazy. You just gonna touch some fried chicken? Oh, you one of them crazy people that, that you know I don't eat the skin. Now listen, if I don't eat chicken, I'm gonna eat the skin too. Listen, I don't mean to say y'all crazy, but but ain't nothing like some skin on some chicken, y'all. And if it's crunchy, glory be to God. I know I'm preaching in this place. You want to touch it, but you, you're not going to eat it. Oh, come on now. Some of y'all can't even look at it because you'll lose your mind. Man, you got to guard your eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on. You, you got to go on that Facebook real fast. You better go on the Instagram where you can't handle it. All of a sudden, you look at all kinds of stuff. Rump shake of mine. God Almighty, y'all ain't going to help me talk. Why? Because it's a gateway. Your eyes is a gateway. And, man, you can't handle to look at it like that. Sometimes you can look at stuff you ain't even trying to look at. Sometimes you can listen to stuff you ain't trying to listen to. You weren't trying to entertain no man, but he was smelling good. He was looking good, and you didn't have a man. You were thirsty, and you needed that fulfilled in your life. Now you got something you can't get rid of. Because you needed somebody to tell you you pretty, baby. You looking good. You looking nice. You needed somebody to spit some game. You needed that. You needed that tongue in your ear because no one else was giving you any attention. Just because you're alone don't mean you're lonely. Are you supposed to be lonely? Oh, hallelujah. You, you can't be alone and still be happy and still be fulfilled until the right one come your way, male or female. Hallelujah. Because what happened is uh, when you get so lonely and desperate, you will take any and everything. If they're not yours, you will take them. They can have five others on the side. You will still take them. Why? Because you don't know your value. Enemy God, what, you said you would never do it, but you're doing it now. Why? Because you don't know your value. When you devalue yourself, uh, you accept anything. Men and women of God, you can't accept anything. Look at your name and say, neighbor, I can't accept anything. You ain't talking right, go on about your business. You at least got to be saved. My God Almighty. We have lowered our standards as Christians uh, talking to unsaved people. If they're not saved, why are you talking to them? They, they worship in Buddha. You are a Christian. How is that going to work? So your kid is going to be Buddhist when you're a Christian. So he gonna, the enemy going to produce seeds after his kind, not your kind. And they're going to grow up not being Christians. And your whole lineage will end up not being Christians. Why? Because you entertained a fool who will never change, who will mean you no good. But you get mad when I talk about him because it make you look like a fool because you was the one who entertained a fool. Stop talking to fools. Why are you entertaining fools? 
people who ain't going to change. I, I, you can pray, 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 but they got to want change within they self. They, they got to want, they got to want a relationship with God. They got to want more for themselves. Uh, I don't want to invest and waste time with people who don't want better for their own life. If you don't want better for you, I, I love you, but I'm not going to invest no more time into you. Do whatever you want to do. I'm going to spend my time with somebody else, uh, even if it's for myself. Some of you need to invest more in yourself and stop trying to invest in everybody else. Wasting your seed. Wasting your energy. Wasting your time. Wasting your life. I feel like a repeat of this. Why are you wasting, 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 wasting? And that's why you don't got no harvest. You're wasting good seed on bad people. Hallelujah. Stop wasting good seed on bad people. Go, go, go. And the enemy came and sowed tares amongst the wheat. People coming and sowing to you. They want to tear your life apart. They'll tear your ministry apart. They'll, they'll, they'll tear your marriage apart. They, they'll tear your increase apart. Hallelujah. And, and they're going to sow it amongst good stuff so the enemy know how to hide it. He ain't going to place it amongst stuff that's already bad in your life. But I'm going to plant it in a productive area of their life. You got a productive marriage, so I'm going to plant a seed in the productive area. So you're looking for the enemy to plant seed in the area that's not good. I ain't worried about that. Why? Because the devil say, I already got you. I want to sow it into your area that you're productive at where you can't see it. It'll go undetected. And some of y'all got some undetected seeds, hallelujah, of negativity that's been sown in your life. But by the time you leave today, discernment is going to spring up at another level where you're going to see some of those undetected seeds that the enemy have sown in your life. And when his way, we don't got that many scriptures, we got four more. And when his way, they'll sow it and go that way like they ain't done nothing. You know people who will start up a ride and they'll walk out like they ain't done nothing. They'll be looking at the ride. I don't know what they find for. You just started all that mess. You just started a you you just started World War Three, and you act like you ain't said nothing. You act like you ain't done nothing. You you act like you just clean as a whistle. Come on now, and win its way. Well, you got to sleep with it. You got to deal with it. You got to deal with the aftermath when they was the one who added it to you. Go to verse 26. Hallelujah. Verse 26, it reads, amen. Hallelujah. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tariff also. Hallelujah. In other words, you're not going to see the negative seed that was sown at first. You will see it later. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, you don't see people for who they are at first. But as you wait and hang on and hold on, you'll find out their real motive. You'll find out their real intention. You got to give crazy time. You don't know if a man or woman crazy, give them time. Don't you get married over there? Don't you get married over there? Don't you get married over there? Give them time. Give them time. See how you act when they're mad. See how they act when they're, people always show you the good side when they're good, but what happens when they're mad? You need to see them, because everybody got to look crazy in them. Like, I got to look crazy in me. Like, I thought this was an angel. You're like, no, this ain't no angel at all. All hell done broke loose. Tired and got slashed. Window done got busted out. C -c -c Come on, sub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> crazy take time. Hallelujah. But the Bible says, but when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares. So they're going to appear, but it's going to do it at the right time. Hallelujah. In other words, let me say this. Uh, what's going on? The enemy is mad at your integrity. So what happened is he don't like the fact that you got some good things going on. So something that you overlook, he'll maximize on that little area that you got in your life. Why? Because he wants to expose you because he already exposed. 
Yeah, y'all ain't gonna help me teach. You, you know people who already been exposed in their life, uh, but they jealous of your loyalty. They jealous of your commitment. They, they, they jealous of your integrity. They, they jealous uh, of your anointing. So they want to find one area in your life uh, that maybe you underlooked. Hallelujah. And they want to maximize uh, on that area and so a seed. Why? They want to discredit your loyalty. Why? Because what happened is uh, they don't want to be the only one looking bad. So they want to drag you along with them. Oftentimes when people name in the mud, they want to drag somebody else's name in the mud with them. Why? Because they don't want you looking clean. They don't want you looking holy. They don't want you being anointed. Yeah, hallelujah. Why? Because it makes them and reminds them for who they really are and what they're supposed to do. Every time you step in the vicinity, they see something on you that really supposed to be on them. So I got to sow a seed of discord where it'll grow up and maybe people will look at them differently. Maybe y'all have never experienced people like that before who looking for something. They, they, they looking for something while you were sleeping, while, while you was unaware. You didn't pay any attention, but it's that little thing. If it get big, it can mess up your integrity. It, Y'all ain't going to help me teach in here. You get to see you, little bro. It can mess up your name. It can, it, it can mess up the spoil that God is trying to do in your life. Uh, you overlooked the little, and now what happened? The little got big. They, they opened up their mouth. Uh, they spread their poison to everybody about you. Why? Because they don't like what you're doing. They don't like what you represent. And oftentimes, you got people, they don't like what you represent. It's too holy. I can't live up to your standard. You, you're not perfect, but, but I can never qualify to operate on that level with God like you. So, so I got to do something to discredit your name. Why? Why? Because you're getting too much notoriety. Why? Because you're getting too much favor over your life. I, I can't just let it rise and fester. I got to sow something there that'll make you question your relationship with God. They'll make you question your walk with God. So what happened? I got to sow something now. Why they not looking for it? Because oftentimes you're not looking for the enemy when he's close. And oftentimes the enemy is so close uh, we can't see them. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, you can see an enemy far away, but the closer your enemy to you, oftentimes you can't see it. And they disguise themselves for being a friend of me. And the Bible says, hallelujah, an enemy had sowed a seed of tares there. It was good ground, but there wasn't a good seed. And some of y'all got good ground, but the people you connecting with are sowing bad seeds in your ground while you are unaware. How they know that your Betsy told them? Where did it come from? Your Betsy done it. Ooh. Hallelujah. And sometimes you can have the wrong Betsy who are throwing seeds in your life. Uh, that's negating the positive seeds. Uh, you guys are sharing the same nutrients. If you do not cut down the weeds, if you don't cut down the weeds, uh, you're gonna share the whole, you're gonna share the same sunlight. And the weeds going to overgrow so fast. Hallelujah. They're going to block the sunlight. They're going to take up all the nutrients in the soil. And what's happening is it's going to grow faster than you. Why? Because you neglected responsibilities. And you didn't uproot it when you saw it was there the first time. Thank you. You ignored it. You said it wasn't a big deal. Hallelujah. It's some stuff in your life. I, I, I'm getting on y'all level that, that you thought it wasn't a big deal. You ignored it, and God didn't allow it to pop up over and over again. That is an enemy song, a seed tear. If you don't pay attention to it now, it will destroy you later. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, if it don't destroy me now, being unattended, it has the potential to destroy me later. In other words, the enemy want to sow seeds to tear your future apart. Hallelujah. The enemy wants your future. He, he wants your destiny. Hallelujah. He wants your destiny. He, 
He wants your future. Glory be to God. He's after your future. Why? Why? Because you're too anointed in your future. You're too prosperous in your future. God see you delivered in your future. You got so many affected in your future. I got to sow season to them now. By the time they enter their harvest, they're not going to enjoy it because they got too much baggage they carried along with them. Enemies after your inheritance. I'm after your name. I'm, I'm after your name. I'm, 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 I'm after your inheritance. I'm after your integrity. I'm after your hard work. You didn't plant a good seed in the ground. And one thing you overlook uh, that can destroy your future. I'm after you, boy. I'm after you, woman. The enemy is after your future. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you don't get rid of these seeds, he won't have a future. You will have a future, but you can't enjoy your harvest. Why? It's too much baggage that's attached to you. And God say, I'm trying to uproot them right now. If you don't take care of it, by the time you enter your harvest, you can't even tell. Because there's too many seeds that was unattended that negated your harvest. Instead of receiving a hundredfold, it's more like twentyfold. Hallelujah. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tariffs also. Also, let's go to the 27th verse. Hallelujah. Verse 27. When you get there, shout amen. So the servants of the household that came and said unto him, Sir, did thou not sow good seed in the field from whence then had it tares? They were like, hold on now. You're supposed to be a Christian. You're supposed to be holy. You're supposed to be integral. You're supposed to be righteous. Huh? Why are you reproducing this in your life? I, I thought you had good seed. Hallelujah. If you got good seed, why are you sowing this? Okay, Pastor D, I thought you teach this. Huh? I thought y'all teach that. Why they living like that? Y'all ain't going to help me. Why? Because the enemy is a seed planter. Yeah. Oh, my God, y'all ain't going to help me talking here. You can teach your children something good. They can still end up doing something bad. Why? Because the enemy got all in their head. Yeah. Then talked to them. Then sowed all kind of seeds of discord. Hallelujah. Sir, did not thou sow good seed in your field? In other words, people will start to question you when they start to see bad stuff pop in your life. They'll start to question you. Well, wait a minute. You ain't integral as you said. Yeah. You ain't anointed as you said. Yeah. You can't see like you thought you can see. You ain't as gifted as I thought you was gifted. Hallelujah. I see something else surfacing up past what you're saying, and it's not looking good. Sir, I thought you sowed good seed. Pastor, I thought you sowed good seed. Why am I hearing this about you? Just because you heard something about a person don't necessarily make it true. We hear stuff about people that can be lies. Lies, lies, seeds of deception, seeds of lying, seeds of being manipulative. Over and over again. Why? Because the enemy is after your future. Somebody look at your name and say, neighbor, the enemy is after my future. He's after my future. Hallelujah. For whence then has it tears? They begin to question him. Go to 28 verse. Hallelujah. Then he said unto them, an enemy has done this. Hallelujah. The servant said unto him, wilt thou then what we go and gather them up? Let us go and gather them up. And if I would have a title of this message, I would call it this. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it wasn't my fault. Look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, it ain't my fault. Say, an enemy done that. Act like it's a rap song. I remember a rap song years ago. Y'all forgive me. I'm a little saying. I mean, I'm still saying, but I believe he was named Sister Shocker. It ain't my fault that I do that. It ain't my fault. And there's some stuff in your life that ain't your fault. An enemy saw to see the negativity there while you was unaware. It ain't your fault. And as a matter of fact, you didn't do this. Somebody look at your name and say, neighbor. Say, it ain't my fault. Say, neighbor. It's not your fault. In other words, hallelujah, what, what, what we going to do, this is some good friends. Good friends, they'll ride or die. They say this, hallelujah, let us go gather them up. 
Sometimes you need some ride or die people. Who's talking about you? Let me go get them. We're going to go back to goons and goonettes. Yeah, I think we need to go there. Sometimes you need a few goons. Who talking about you, man of God? Who, who trying to discredit your name, girl? I ain't going to play and pray. I ain't going to lay hands. Not them kind of hands. See, I ain't going to hear me talking. I'm going to lay some different kind of hands on them. You better leave my sister alone. Leave. Let's go gather all of them up. They mama them. They daddy and them. I don't care who they are. If you're not that person, you better be connected to two or three people like that that really got your heart. You better have one or two people you can call on who don't mind riding with you, who don't mind dying with you. You know they got your back. Hallelujah. Y'all look at me in the back. And so what's going on, y'all pay attention to the back. Y'all, y'all look at me. Look. What's going on is this. Oftentimes what happens is we have people, amen, that got our back and they ready to ride. They, they, they ready to ride, hallelujah. They, they ready for something to pop off. They, 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 they ready, and you got to have at least two or three people in your life. Uh, when something pop out, let us go gather them up. Gather up the cousin. Gather up the babies. Gather up everybody. Let's talk about it right now. So it won't be no he say. It won't be no she say. I need to talk to the source direct. I, I need to know exactly what you said. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I need to know who said it. I need to know the time you said it. I need to know the time you done it. I don't got no time for no second source information. I need to hear it from the horse's mouth. There's some good friends. Hallelujah. With that then, let us go gather them up. You said they so bad. See, let me go get them. Let me do what I'm going to do. I'm a goon. Goons act a fool. Can I act a fool one day, Pastor? Can I, can I act a fool one day? Y'all, come on, hallelujah. But this is what wisdom says. <laughs> I done got y'all all riled up, ready to fight. Now I'm telling you to calm down. Man, why can't you let me handle this? You know what I'm saying, man? Let me handle this, you know what I'm saying, man. Come on, let me do what I'm supposed to do, you know what I'm saying. Come on, you know what I'm saying, man. You know, people are just waiting to act the fool. When they get to saying, you know what I'm talking about, your know, hand gets to shaking, sweating, come on. They don't even stutter. They're the most fluent talker of all time. Get to stuttering, they ready to act up. You say, no, we got this chill out. God going to handle it. Let your name say, neighbor. Just relax. Say God gonna handle. God, God gonna handle. Right, let us go get them. Oh, relax. Let's see what the next verse say. Hallelujah. But he said nine. No, least while we gather them up, the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. In other words. They're grown together. In other words, uh, wheat and tear, hallelujah, they look like the exact same. If you don't know what you're looking for, when reaping time will come, hallelujah, you will gather the tear instead of the wheat. Uh, I, I want y'all to follow me. We're going somewhere. And if you eat the tear, it'll make you sick. It'll make you throw up. It'll give you fear. Fever. Come on, somebody. It, it, it can literally kill you because you ate the wrong thing because it looked like something that was digestible. And oftentimes we eat some things uh, that look like something like it's digestible, but we didn't closely inspect it. Uh, so the Lord say, hallelujah, least while we gather up the tares also, hallelujah, we will uproot the wheat with them. Uh, in other words, uh, you got to let the bad people grow with the good people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, uh, just because you say hallelujah don't mean you're going to heaven. Y'all ain't going to help me. In, in other words, uh, just because you speak in a tongue uh, don't mean that's a tongue from the Holy Ghost. Uh, Y'all yeah, ain't gonna hear me preaching here. In other words, hallelujah, we get it mixed up uh, because we got a collar on or a suit uh, and you think we holy. Your long dress don't make you holy. You can look holy. 
But underneath the holiness that you look like, uh, you can be a little hoish underneath that. And, and the problem is, uh, we get confused. Because the wheat and tile look the exact same into harvest time. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't be confused. So, so, so what happened is, hallelujah, we can't get rid of all our enemies. We can't get rid of every hater in our life. Why? Because when you uproot them, uh, you also uproot somebody who's connected to them in a positive way, who needs a word that's going to come out of your mouth. Wisdom will teach you not to go beat them up. Uh, why? Because they son or daughter are really saved and set free. And when you hurt them, you'll kill your influence uh, to the son and the daughter. So let them get old enough to find out uh, that their mama ain't no good, uh, that their daddy ain't no good, uh, that their brother ain't no good, uh, that their sister ain't no good. Uh, don't handle them, but let them handle it on their own uh, when they grow up to a level of maturity. In other words, hallelujah, least we gather up the tares. You uproot them. In other words, the wheat and the tares uh, have been intertwined. That they, they share the same soil. They're, they're sharing the same root system. And when you uproot people who are unholy or who are fake people or who are people, hallelujah, who are not really say what they are because you are intertwined and, and, and the roots are interlocked. Uh, when you uproot the bad, uh, you also uproot the good. Uh, and some of y'all have tried to uproot some bad folk, uh, but that bad folk uh, was attached to something good uh, that was in your life uh, and now you ain't seeing no good harvest uh, because you done it prematurely I, I hope I'm making sense but you just can't put it up you, you gotta do it at harvest time you, you, you can't uproot everybody you got to do it in the right season because if you uproot the wrong person in the wrong season you become wrong Although they was the wrong person. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh man, maybe this more for leadership. Hallelujah. When you uproot something wrong at the wrong time, you become wrong. Why? Because you cannot spare their losses. That, that's what the Bible said. Hallelujah. When you uproot them, you also uproot something that was good, that was attached to them. They weren't good, but they sister were good. And you uprooted them at the wrong time. Now you can't experience no harvest. Because they rooted together. Oftentimes when people are close to people, they never see the bad in them. And it's not for you to try to expose the bad in somebody. Some people got to learn to see for themselves. Yeah, y'all ain't going to help me talking here. Hallelujah. Like, yeah, I, I don't care how crazy my cousin may be. I'm just using it as an example. Hallelujah. Amen. It's better that God reveal to me how off that my mama, my dad, and my brother, whoever they may be, then you reveal it. Why? Because I'm going to get mad at you, and you're going to uproot me. So you got to let God do the revealing and the revelation. Y'all ain't going to help me talking here. That's why I stay out of relationships. Because I can tell your husband no good. Your husband going to stay a cheater. He going to stay a lover. And you'll get mad at me. And I'm telling you the truth. When you're going to go right back with him. So I don't got nothing to say. Baby, do whatever you want to do. I'm going to give you good wisdom. I'm going to pray for you. Why? But why? Because why? Because you start defending him. Why he in his sin and why he in his mess. But you say you trust me, but when I give you information that'll bring you out, now you defending what's killing you. How you gonna defend the thing that's killing you? That relationship draining you. I need a beat on the wall there, the wood. I was looking for it. No, I need you to beat that wall. I'm missing something in this message. What? What? We can have church now. Come on now. I, I, I'm like, come on, he ain't done it yet. How you going to defend what's killing you? It's draining you. It's, it's emptying you. Y'all ain't going to help me talking here. You know she ain't no good. It's nothing that I can tell you. God didn't show you in a dream. He didn't show you in a vision. It can't come out of my mouth because you're going to lead a church. Hallelujah. So we're going to let them grow together. 
Some stuff you got to let grow together. You got to let the bad grow with the good. You got to let the good grow. Some stuff you got to leave it alone. Stop giving the enemy extra attention. You give the enemy power by giving the enemy so much attention. Stop giving the enemy all your attention. The enemy does not have power until you give him a platform. We give the hater too much attention. We give witchcraft too much attention. But no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises up against you shall be condemned. If I know my word, whatever they do is not going to prosper. It may going to form, but it ain't going to work. Look at your name and say, it's going to form. But it ain't going to work, minister man. It, it's going to form, DJ. But it ain't going to work. I got somebody to give it. It ain't going to work. Praise. Uh, and stand up and open up their mouth uh, and give God a shout. It ain't going to work. 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 Why? Because it ain't my fault. It ain't going to work because it ain't my fault. There's some stuff in your life. You didn't put them. You didn't plant it. The enemy planted it. The enemy sold it into your life. Hallelujah. You weren't thinking about it. Hallelujah. But the enemy put it there. And it's starting to grow now. And you want to get rid of it because it's making you look bad. It's making you look frustrated. It's making you look like you're not, hallelujah, a secure person. It's making it look like you you, you have no integrity. An enemy planting a seed there. Why? Because he knew it would affect your future of how other people looked it up on you. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 30. We almost out of here. Hallelujah. Someone shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. But let both grow together until harvest and in the time of harvest I say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares just because they first don't mean they gonna stay Oftentimes, we're faithful to the first, but the first can call more hell than the new. Y'all ain't going to help me. That's because they was your first person in your life. Don't mean they're going to be the last person in your life. Oh, my God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why are you faithful to what's first when what's first is killing you? That was my first best friend. Well, your first best friend ain't good no more. Your first best friend is a liar. Your first best friend is a backstabber. Yeah, well, y'all yeah, ain't going to help me talk in a place. Hallelujah. Why are you faithful to your first when they always making you have your last? Your first love. And you don't want to get rid of your first love, but your first love got you on your last leg. Your, uh, your, your first love got you doing the last thing you said you would do. Now you're doing something you said you would never do, taking care of a broke Negro. Y'all ain't going to help me. Hallelujah. You're doing stuff you will never do. Why? Why? Yeah, yeah. Because it was your first love. Y'all don't like this kind of teaching. Y'all mad at me. I feel heat from everywhere. I need an air conditioner right about now. Let me drink some water. Some H2O, it's warming up. It's getting hot in here. Keep your clothes on. Hallelujah. How <laughs> you getting so hot? No, keep them on. Keep, keep them on. Keep them. So y'all ain't that same. I was testing y'all. Y'all know that song. Y'all, y'all, y'all. Yeah, y'all know that song. Y'all, y'all know that song. Yeah. And to harvest. And in the time of harvest. I would say to the reapers, gather up first the tares. You mad at people because they before you. Because they first don't mean they're going to stay. But God said, let the first be last and last be first. Why are you mad at other people that's ahead of you? Because if they ain't living right, if they ain't integral, if they open the legs to get to where they at, 
You don't know how the people got what they got, hallelujah. They might have got that platform by opening up their legs, by opening up their garden. If you got to open up your garden to get a platform, you can keep your garden. You don't got to operate in lust and divination to, to get platforms. You don't got to operate in manipulation and boost people's head up to get microphones. I'd rather do it the way God gave me. I don't got to flirt with a thousand or a hundred women in order to get them to join the ministry. I'd rather do it the way God gave me. I, can't, I got one woman who I give my attention to. I don't, can't, I don't got no time to get my attention to nobody else. Not like that. If you want that from me, you ain't going to get it. Y'all ain't going to talk to me, preach. Why? Because that ain't going to bring you out. That ain't going to set you free. That ain't going to deliver you. I want you delivered. I want you set free. I want you brought out. You will never be brought out. Y'all ain't going to help me talking here. You ain't going to be brought out if I'm your issue. If I'm your issue, how you going to be delivered? How you going to be delivered every time your, your issue is talking and prophesying and speaking over your life? You will never be delivered. Why? Because I'll be your issue. And I thank God I'm not perfect, but I ain't none of y'all issue. I can say that with pride. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, say, I ain't your issue. Say, and if I was, I'm your issue. I'm not your issue no more. Let's go on and get out of here. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I was in a bad season. And I had bad seed that was sown by the enemy. But at the right time, the Bible said, bind up the bundles. And they're going to burn them up. So what's bad in your life? God's about to gather it up. Some of that bad seed that was sown on good soil. And it was not your fault. And God say, I got you back. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got some bad seed. And it's not your fault. I found one more neighbor. Say, neighbor, say, it ain't my fault. But I know God is going to take care of. That's not my fault. So in other words, what's good is going to come up with what's bad. But at the time of harvest, I'm going to count my losses. And I'm going to say, I shall away ghosts. You can go back back. Take what you want to take. You can take your offering. You can take your praise. You can take your gift. I'm not concerned about that. I'm in my harvest time. And I can spare your loss. I can spare your $20. Y'all ain't going to have me preach. I can spare your praise. I can spare your preaching. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I'm in my harvest time, and God's gathering up everything the enemy tried to sow in my life. When I was asleep, when I wasn't paying attention, when I was a little gullible, when I didn't know good from bad, bad from good, the enemy sowed a seed. But God said, I got your back, and I know your heart, and I know your motive was right, and I want your future to be prosperous. I want your future to have more than enough. I want your future to be the best season of your life. Look at two people and say, now I have been in my harvest areas, and you're not for me. You against me. Look at your neighbor and say it like this. Are you with me? Are you with me? If you with me, you're a part of my wheat. Are you with me? Are you with me? If you got part of my wheat, then you are with me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. I got weeds, and I'm going to share it with you. 
You're going to be a part of my harvest. You didn't talk behind my back. You didn't sow seeds. You kept my secrets. You kept it. You didn't use it against me when you could have had me looking like a fool. You concealed it and you concealed anything for a good friend that you confided in somebody and it haven't got out. You better allow them to be a part of your harvest. I don't know about anybody, but I'm in my harvest. It's not coming, but it's here. It's him. Tag to people and say it's him. It's here. Your harvest. It's here. Your harvest. It's here. Your deliverance. It's here. Your next level. It's here. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. It's here. It's here. It's here. I guess somebody high five me as I go. My harvest is here. Your breakthrough is here. Your deliverance is here. Your next level is here. Open up your mouth and give God praise. Come on and give God glory. It's here. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, it's here. Come on and give God praise. Come on. I dare you to give God praise. Like you know that it is here right now. You don't got to wait on something that's already here. You only wait on stuff when it ain't here. But when it's here, you don't got to wait on it. Some of y'all waiting on something that's here. Your package have arrived. Come on, give God a praise. And in this here praise right now. Ah, I dare. Give God glory. It's like when you wait on a message, an email, that tell you your package have arrived. All you got to do is go home and get it. I hear a prophesy to you right now. You've been waiting on a confirmation. And your confirmation is by the way of the Holy Ghost. What you've been looking for and checking your inbox over and over again. I'm here to give you a word of confirmation. What you've been looking for is at your front doorstep. Open up your mouth and give God a praise. It's here now. Your harvest is here. Your harvest is here. Your harvest is here. Your breakthrough is here. Come on, give God the glory. It's here. Come on, give him a... Come on now. Give him praise in the place. Someone shout that it's here. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it is here now. Do I got anybody here so we can get out of here? But God, it's here kind of praying. You've been prophesying it long enough. And some of y'all still believe it. We had multiple testimonies about an hour ago. And basically all they were saying, it showed up. It's here. Maybe you didn't get to testify. But like the woman God said, when you give God praise for somebody else, yours will arrive as well. So maybe this wasn't your time to testify, but you had before it happened yet. God said, give God praise for what he's done for somebody else. And you'll get what's yours. Open up your mouth and give God praise. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise. Here now, my mind. You wanna praise His name? You wanna bless His name? Come on! I gotta hear your praise away. Yeah, it's here and it's mine. 
listen now. Somebody shout the God is here. Yeah. It's here and I'm going. Oh, praise the man of Jones. It's here now. Some of y'all gonna miss your blessing. You wanna give God praise? Go by Saka de Buffalo, but hold on. It's here now. Dig, 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 dig. Hallelujah. With all the teaching we do, I never forget how to put a praise on it. I don't care how educated I get. I never forget. We'll never forget how to put a praise on it. Yeah. We're a word church. We're going to be a praising church. Open up your mouth, praise and meet it. Well, Pastor, I don't think I got to do all that. Let me tell you a true story. It was a prophet. And the prophet said, I need you to dance and shout. God will give you some money. He's going to bless you with a new car. How about this? The woman came back to service the next day and said, prophet, I got the car, and I didn't do all that shouting. Somebody came in and said, ma'am, your new car just got stole. I don't need blessings to come, but I need blessings to come and to stay. I don't need them just to come, Pastor. I don't, I, but I need the blessings to come and that's to say. The word made the blessings come. But your praise is going to allow the blessings to stay. If you don't, you might can't shout, but you got a mouth. You better open up your mouth and give him a yes. 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 Go ahead and give God praise. They coming and they stand at an increase with no sorrow. They coming and they go stand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise the nation. Praise the. Yeah, 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 yeah. Praise the perfect. They coming and they stand. What's coming in your life? You scared to praise him because you didn't have money before. You didn't have cost before. You didn't have increase before. But it hasn't stayed. But God say there's an anointing that what comes in your life this season is gonna stay in your life. I see an everlasting blessing. I dare somebody give God a praise for an everlasting blessing. Glory to God. Praise it. It came before, but it never stayed before. I'm not praising just because it's coming. I'm praising because this time to call it. It's going to stay. 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 Morning gon' stay. My church gon' stay still. Ba ba ko ba ka da ba te ba. Ye de ku re ba ka la ba. My house that I buy next time is gon' stay, 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 stay. stay. It's going to stay. It's going to stay, mother. Yeah, my What's going to come back by the way of the enemy? I'm not saying it because God said it. I'm saying it because I declare. Not arrogantly, but boldly in the Holy Ghost. That it won't come back. That you go stay delivered, set free, brought out. 
Stay set free. You don't want to be a burden to nobody. You know, but God said it's going to stay. Your place. Yeah, I remember the word spoken over your life bro, about a month ago. And the Lord said, I'm extending your life. Everybody, the Lord said the word is still spoken over your life. Bro, and you ain't going nowhere no time soon. You're going to stay around and be around. Somebody give God praise all over the place. It's gonna stay. You keep that volume up. It's gonna stay. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm staying in my breakthrough. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on and glorify him. The world gonna make it so, but your friends gonna make it stay. Don't get mad at me when it's gone. I told you to open up your mouth. Some of y'all ain't desperate enough. I, I want, I'm hungry for my deliverance. I wanna be set free. You can't set free till you open up your mouth. 